50 bottles. It's a little much. It's going to take a while. But it has a nice ring to it. 50 under 50. You got to go for it. Today, I wanted to challenge myself and give back to the fragrance community at the same time with this video. You may be on a budget, not sure what to get. Well, this list may help you find a fragrance for you for under $50 USD. Let's see if I can compile a list of 50 cents. Keep it tuned in. What's going on, Fragrance family? Welcome to my top 50 under $50 video. This will be a list compromised of 50 cents. You'll have your choice, definitely, which is handpicked by yours truly, the guy that's wearing the Canadian tuxedo here, as some of the best bargains on FragranceX.com. Now, talking about FragranceX.com, they are my partner in crime, and I did want to thank them for their loyalty to the Robes Away channel. Uh, we are going on strong for two years now. Um, they've uh, definitely uh, helped me out with the channel. Uh, thank you for the great partnership. Um, if you are browsing on the site, please do not hesitate to utilize my coupon code, which is uh, my YouTube handle, Robes08 on FragranceX, and you will receive 15% off on any purchase. Now that is their standard code, but you are helping yours truly and I appreciate that. If you're just stumbling upon this video, please subscribe, stick a while, hit the bell if you want to, to be notified of my new videos. I certainly appreciate that. I'm also all over social media. You can look me up on the Robes 08 on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, Twitter. I also have a Facebook group called Fragrance Guru Nation, which is a fragrance group. We're up to 16,900 members, looking for 17,000 members. Uh, we talk about fragrances uh, people sell, um, some people uh, discuss fragrance reviewers. So it's a really a, a great group if you have a Facebook account. So now, this kind of video, I need to run some ground rules because I know a lot of you down there in the comments below, you're gonna say, well, what about this one? What about that one? Why didn't you pick that one? Yeah, I'm gonna let you know. I got some ground rules for me and for you. <laughs> so let's get into the rules. So number one, the very first rule is I could only find the scent on FragranceX.com. So I utilize the site and my collection as uh, of course my hub. As they are my partner in crime, that is a given. But of course it does not mean that they have the best price online. And I always want you to do the research prior to purchasing. Um, so it does restrict me on some websites. They have some great scents under 50 bucks that I couldn't util utilize on here. Maybe it was out of stock on Fragrance X or it's a little higher than $50. One thing is for sure, if you are scared that you're saying, ah, is it legit? Yes, I can only honestly say that after uh, receiving over 100 bottles from FragranceX.com, they are legit. And most of my reviews in 2019 were actually from this website. You saw me unbox them, initial impressions, and of course, review them. Now the scent has to be in stock at Fragrance X at the time of shooting. Now, if you're watching this and it's months later, it may not be in stock anymore. So I had to give that to myself is that if it's not in stock, I couldn't put it in the list. So it restricted me a little bit. Uh, also like a fragrance like uh, Mugli Cologne, which is a great fragrance and I'm sure it would have been under 50 bucks. It was out of stock. Um, I feel it would have been great on this video because it's a very versatile scent, unfortunately. I couldn't put it in the list. Now, if you are interested in a fragrance that is out of stock on FragranceX, it's great because you can put your email uh, to let them know that you're interested in that fragrance. Once it gets back into stock, they actually send you a notification in your email. So it's great for that. Now the price itself, I was kind of considering a uh, Canadian because I am from Canada, bonjour. Uh, however, uh, I had to uh, reflect the price that um, their standard 15% uh, coupon code, uh, which of course is my Rhodes 08 coupon code. So uh, the price itself is reflected with my coupon code in USD. I am Canadian, but utilizing USD first makes this challenge a little easier on yours truly. 
<laughs> and most of my subscribers are actually from America. So we'll go with that. The price also does not reflect tax or shipping. Um, so I'm foregoing that. I'm actually just looking at the price that when you're going on the website, if it's under $50, I'm going with that. Uh, so I'm foregoing that. It's the price listed when I click on the fragrance. Fourth rule, I have to own the fragrance myself. There's no way that I can say, hey, you should check out that fragrance if I don't own it myself. Um, it's kind of weird that I would suggest a fragrance if I don't own it. So the fifth and last rule is I can't utilize testers or open boxed items on this list. I really wanted uh, something that would be true blue uh, retail uh, fragrance that you would receive at your door. Uh, testers is kind of like cheating because they don't have a box. Uh, open box items, of course, still have the box, but they may have been returned or something. There's nothing wrong with those those uh, open boxes or testers. Actually, it's better for your, your bank for your buck but I wanted to uh, keep this list as true blue uh, that you get the retail packaging that I've received. So that's it. Uh, the list I compiled will be in order of pricing, quality, and what I feel is overall the best bang for your buck. So you're gonna see some really great fragrances, but the price tag was 50 bucks. I'll bring it down a notch, but then you got a fragrance like maybe Ancre Noir from La Ligue. It made the list, um, which is like $25 and tell me that you can, can't can find a fragrance or can find a fragrance for 25 bucks as a quality of Ancre de Water. I really love uh, that fragrance. So it is going to make the list and it's gonna do it very high. Also when compiling this list and hell did it take me a long time. Um, I have a collection of eh, 1500 bottles here, there, a designer niche, indie, all that uh, obviously uh, Indian niche are not going to make this list, uh, but I have a lot of designer fragrances. I would probably say over eight, nine hundred. It's the bulk of my collection, to be quite honest with you. So I had a lot to work with, but at the same time, I wanted to keep in mind um, the list would include a lot of people different in their journey, right? A seasoned nose, uh, someone that has maybe five or six fragrances looking for something to add, or someone that's really new, a rookie in the fragrance game, looking for maybe their first fragrance uh, to their collection. Um, so I really wanted to take my time with this uh, this list, and you're gonna see a lot of things that I'm, I'm even gonna say, this is for the seasoned nose. Don't blind buy it if it's like your first bottle of cologne just because I said it's number 25 on my list. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that is uh, the way I've compiled the list. One thing I did notice when compiling this list is all newer releases, 2019, 2018, that do sell well are not going to be under 50 bucks. So things that you may see that sells well in Macy's, like the Sauvages, Ville de Chanel. So don't expect those type of fragrances in there. However, there's many scents that were top sellers years ago. Now, there's a lot of fragrances from the 90s that are still really good and they're in this list and uh, they dropped in price. That's what happens with time. Uh, you're gonna see many top sellers from five, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, my list is all over the place, uh, but there's still solid scents to this day. It's solid purchases, especially for under 50 bucks. So you won't see too many 2019 releases. Um, so onto the list, right? Let's do this. I uh, hope you have a coffee, popcorn, whatever you need, because I know this is gonna be a long, um, long, long video. <laughs> I talk a lot. Uh, at the same time, I do wanna sniff them. I got my cards right here. I'm ready to go. And I do wanna sniff them when I talk about them. And I'm gonna try to give you guys as much detail as I can in a little snapshot on every fragrance. So let's start with number 50. Number 50 is from the house of Calvin Klein. And this is a fragrance, of course, uh, <laughs> that I had a journey with. Um, it is a brand that I never go full retail on. And there's brands in this list that you never go full retail. Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, John Varvatos, just to name a few. They get new releases, do not pay 90, 100 bucks USD, are you crazy? Wait till they come to discounters, they're 20, 30 bucks. That's the way I do it. So I, I'm patient with a lot of brands and so should you. So Calvin Klein, this is an oldie from the 90s and it is one of my signature sets way back when I was in high school. This is Calvin Klein CKB. Now CKB, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? This is a sentimental pick of the list, honestly. Um, very much a sentimental pick of the list. I have to have one of these. I wore this in high school and for a huge 6.6 .6 ounce bottle that you see right here, this bottle looks humongous. Once I start putting other bottles beside it, you're gonna see this thing is huge. Um, you'll need to, to reapply with this fragrance. It, it doesn't last long. Um, 
But the sticker price of $27 on Fragrance X, this is a solid starter fragrance for someone in their teens, perhaps it is unisex. I can see women or men wear this. It's even a solid casual scent for someone a little older. Um, I still wear mine from time to time, but mostly for the memories. Uh, not the best in quality in this list, I'll be quite honest, but it is a sentimental pick for me. A lavender-based scent, and I hate lavender, but a lot of my sentimental favorites, Le Mal, this one, uh, have a lot of lavender in them, but there is some fragrances that I absolutely hate with lavender in it. Um, but anyway, uh, I have a review on my channel on this one, if you wanted to go check it out, uh, if you want to take a look at it, but number 50, CKB from the House of Calvin Klein. We're gonna go back to back CK, just because Calvin Klein, once they hit that, and they're not gonna go any lower than 20 bucks, depending on the bottle size, but they're usually the threshold 20 to $30 at discounter. So if you're paying more than that for a Calvin Klein, be patient, they're gonna hit the 20, $30 mark. So this one, number 49, CK1 Shock. CK1 actually has some pretty decent flankers to it. I love the summer ones. Um, yeah, they don't last long, but the scents are actually pretty good. And this one right here, is it a shock that I'm going back to back Calvin Klein's to start this list? Probably, but <laughs> from time to time, CK surprises me. And this is one of those. I hear rumblings that this has been discontinued by Calvin Klein, which means this price right now that you're gonna get here is the lowest that you're gonna see it uh, for 6.7 ounce, which is bigger than this one. I just got the 3.4 here uh, for 25 bucks. What? You can't go wrong. This is a warmer, darker fragrance made for fall and winter, utilizing tobacco, amber as its main notes. Um, it's a sal solid, casual scent uh, from Calvin Klein. I don't have a review yet on this one. I'm working on it, but excellent scent. And there's nothing wrong with this CK1. <laughs> now, number 48, it's already getting crowded in here and I only have two bottles in front of me. It's gonna be fine. At number 48 from the House of Kenzo, a brand that uh, whew, doesn't get much love, um, doesn't get much press. I love Kenzo, and this is one of uh, many classics from the 90s, and this is Kenzo Puram. Uh, bottle shape and look will be different. Um, this thing has been reformulated, and it also has been uh, rebottled or rebranded, so just keep that in mind. My bottle may not look like your bottle, but it's okay. If you're getting it from Fragrance X, you're good. So Kenzo Puram, um, yeah. A beautiful uh, blue-green fragrance. Uh, you can tell uh, aquatic type. Um, I like this one. I'm a big fan of this brand. Like Kenzo has Kenzo Power. I love that one. And Kenzo Tokyo. Uh, but sadly for the other two, they're not readily available. But this one, this one is readily available on Fragrance X. So I chose this one to rep the brand of Kenzo. Put them. Um, did go through many reformulations, just word of the wise. Uh, but Man, this was a solid scent back in the 90s and still good to this day. Uh, you can grab a 1.7 ounce bottle for 30 bucks on Fragrance X. Um, this is one of the better aquatics that you can grab. Um, there is a few out there. Um, I really like the true blue nature of this particular fragrance. I feel like you're deep down in the ocean. And that's the type of aquatic scents that I like. Some have like that salty sea air type of feel. Not a fan. I like the denser stuff and this is one of those. Uh, and this thing was a top seller, still doing well for the House of Kenzo, by the way. And uh, a solid grab, dark blue, some greens. Solid grab, and I do have a review on my channel on this particular scent. Kenzo put on a great grab at number 48. 47, let's go with Ralphie. Ralph Lauren, uh, let's go with Polo Blue. Another blue type scent, but um, this is the Eau de Toilette, um, so there is, uh, you know, different variations of this particular scent, so make sure that you go with the EDT of it. At number 47, I believe this is the only pony <laughs> in this list. Uh, Polo Blue Eau de Toilette. Um, yeah, this is a true blue release. Um, again, word of the wise, be careful. There's many flankers of this particular scent, so you don't want to go on a website and purchase the EDP that I, I'm talking about, the EDT. Um, so this was one of my first loves from uh, the house of Ralphie, uh, Ralph Lauren, and I was never a fan of the brand, to be quite honest, but this one was solid for me. It's cucumber, melon drop uh, type of feel up, up top. Uh, you can get a 2.5 ounce of this stuff for $49, so right at the threshold, and I'm happy it made the list. Also a great starter fragrance here, to be quite honest. I have a review on my channel on this one really a, a solid set at 47. Now at number 46, this is probably a con controversial one because I absolutely love this fragrance. I gave it really high marks. Some people in the community really didn't like this. 
and some actually really did. So just word of the wise, this is from Lancome and the only fragrance from Lancome. I'm actually surprised this stuff's in stock. It knows up and I love this bottle. Oh yeah, it looks like somebody just scrunched it up. Now Hip knows um, talking about lavender. This is Modus Roussel, by the way, a great perfumier, great nose. Um, oh yeah, uh, you can get a 1.7 ounce of this stuff uh, for $36, and I feel that's a steal for this type of fragrance. The nose behind this is Modus Roussel, a master with the note of lavender. He's done some great, great stuff with lavender. And he does his thing here. Lancome is an unusual brand to talk about in men's fragrances, but I felt this one they did an absolute great job. And gorgeous. I do have a review on my channel on this one. A solid one for good price. And that bottle, probably the nicest in this bunch right now. Beautiful, beautiful scent uh, from Lancome. Now at number 45, a newer release, a fragrance that this generation will know full well about. Armani Code Profumo. Now, Armani fragrances. You want to know the real truth? Overpriced. You're paying for the name of Armani. That's Armani right. pricing, overpriced. Um, they are pricing themselves into the Chanel and Christian Dior realm, and those two brands uh, take Armani and throw it in the garbage, basically. Scent versus pricing. Um, it doesn't even come close. Chanel and Ziad have the, this one beat. And you're paying for the name on this one. Um, on these particular scents, Armani as a whole. I'm not pigeonholing uh, Profumo here. So, and it's funny because you won't see any Chanel or Ziad's on this list for good reason. They hold their pricing even at discounters. So, unfortunately, if they're brands that I really, really do like, and they're really hard to see under 50 bucks for Chanel and Ziad. You're going to have to pay for them. Um, coming in at $30 for a one ounce bottle, so you're not getting much here, a one ounce bottle, um, you can at least try this hype beast from years ago. Um, it's a modern take. You're gonna smell like everyone else, but it is, of course, a solid scent. I'm getting an Amar Armani for under $50 is almost unheard of, so this might be one for you. It's a tonka bean based fragrance with a lot of sweetness. It could be great for the younger folks out there looking uh, at this list. I have a review on this on my channel. A solid scent from Armani. I've smelled better, but it's a good one. And that's why I made the list. Now, number 44 from the house of Diesel. Yeah, Diesel. Diesel fuel for life. And this is an awkward pick. Why? Because um, I love it and I still do. I still like this one. It's a, it's a weird one, but I feel like it's an underrated fragrance. Not talked about at all uh, these days, but um, it's a synthetic sweet fragrance, but let's go with Diesel because they've made a pretty good one. This is my favorite from the brand. Oh, this is good. And that's not saying much to be quite honest, Diesel. Eee, only the Brave, don't do it. Coming in at $48 for 2.5 ounce, you're gonna get a sweet raspberry scent that I feel is perfect for a teen or someone that wants something a little more plateful for nighttime use, date use. Uh, upon release, it was super popular, but fell off a cliff in popularity like super fast. But I think if you like sweet scents, this is a unique one to pull off in 2019 and you're actually going to smell great. I love this one. I do have a review on my channel on this one. I shot that back in 2009 or 10, I think. It was an old review, but I still feel the same way about that fragrance. I think it's the best from Diesel by a long, long, long shot. Now, at number 43, let's take a look at the house of Annie Marie. This is another brand that really doesn't get much press, but this is him. Um, this is the Eau de Toilette. There's an EDP of this one. Either way you can go. Um, I feel like they're both solid releases. Uh, but this one right here, the Eau de Toilette, you can get a 3.4 ounce, which is this one, um, for $29. And guess what? This is somebody for, um, if you're looking for something uh, relaxing or something, this is a tea-based scent. And this is maybe for a more mature crowd. You're gonna get one of the better tea-based scents on the market that I can think of for under $50. I, um, I have a hard time even grasping and thinking about a tea-based fragrance under 50 bucks right now that could compete with this. It has a good cinnamon hit. It's just perfect. It's one of the better scents actually for fall. It's warming, it's comforting. Uh, this reminds me that I should really review this scent on my channel. Um, some complain about longevity and projection on this one, but a scent like this, I don't care. A great scent to wear around the house. A scent like this is great for when you want to concentrate or study something. I just feel like tea-based fragrances kind of get me, you know, I should wear tea-based fragrances when I do fragrance reviews because um, really they just calm me a little bit. And this one does that. And uh, yeah, a solid one from a brand 
that not many people know about in the men's aisle. So this one, you'd be very unique. By the way, I'm gonna start throwing these at the camera just because. <laughs> Number 42 from the house of Versace. You're not gonna see too much Versace in this one right here. We've had our time together. Not a big fan of this, but at the same time for pricing, and I'm looking at the teenagers out there, um, this can be a good signature scent. Um, funny enough, this one more popular than the Versace Man that it is a flanker of. Uh, I prefer the Versace Man in the purple bottle, by the way, but that one, uh, long discontinued, hard to find. Um, you can get a 3.4 ounce, which is this one right here for $43 on Fragrance X. This fragrance was a hype beast. They had a hype like no other on YouTube back in 2010. Um, it's a solid fresh scent. Um, but, but it's a solid scent. It's good for signature scent for somebody that's really just starting. Um, it's not one of my favorites, but for the price, I'm going to say that for somebody that's just starting their journey as he's, you know, like a, just a Swiss army knife of sorts uh, for warmer climate, why not? But word of the wise, once you start getting into frags like, like yours truly here, collects a little bit of dust here in the grooves and it's hard to dust. <laughs> Number 42 from the house of Versace. 41, oh, we're getting out of the 40s finally. 41, we're gonna go back to Calvin Klein. Again, there's a lot of CK right now. Trust me, I think this probably is the end of Calvin Klein here on this list. This is CK2. I just got this like months ago and uh, oh, I was surprised. The CK, Calvin Klein does that sometimes. They release like a hundred fragrances in the year. And all of a sudden, you get a stunner, but they discontinue them as fast as they've released them. So, um, <laughs> this is the newer release from this list. All these uh, Calvin Kleins here are, of course, older releases. This is one of the newer one. The price is $40 for a 3.4 ounce, so this is what you get here. And it may go down once the popularity of the fragrance dips more, um, because they do, as per these two, they go down to under 30 bucks eventually. This one is very much unisex. It's kind of based as the new CK1, and I see that easy to throw on. Um, I was ple pleasantly surprised on how this fragrance is actually built. Um, it's a scent that is newer to my collection, but I'm loving it. I'm wearing it casually. You can see I put a dent into it, and um, I wear it at work. It won't offend anybody. Very nice watery take on this one. Well done from Calvin Klein. Ooh, I see a couple classics over here that are coming up but before we get to the classics we got to take a look at some car company fragrances yeah i said it this is from the house of ferrari they got two fragrances in this top 50 for good reason because when these were hard to find people were willing to spend 70 80 90 dollars for these fragrances and now they're super cheap grab them when you can um this one right here i love figs as a note just because um you're different from everybody else in uh, the game everybody's wearing citruses you know orange and, and lemons and stuff like that and you're wearing fig very watery very green well done ferrari does a good job here so we got ferrari and we also have bentley that's coming up in the list car companies making a list like this i would say on my channel would have been a hard thing to do but these car companies are bringing in some pretty good releases and i can't ignore them this one right here price point of 25 dollars for noble fig are you kidding me right now um that's a no-brainer fig's a great note to wear oh man it's cooling it's green it's transparent it's watery it's a beautiful fig in this one um this is one of the better figs in the game right now i recall when this was very scarce online people were splitting bottles of this stuff that's how crazy it was in the fragrance community at 25 bucks this is a steal of a purchase if you want quality and you want fig and you want to dip your foot into the fig game 100% blind by this, 25 bucks. Uh, you will not be disappointed. You'll know what fig smells like, at least start your fig collection. Man, and you wanna stick around, I got another Ferrari in this list that is very good. But let's go into the 30s now. Number 39, this is from a brand, a well-renowned brand. Uh, maybe not for you if you're new in this game. This is Molinar and this is their fragrance which is a leather-based fragrance. I love my leathers. I like them big and bold. And this is right up there. This is a very unique uh, fragrance in this list. This is not like the others here. A uh, reason why, oh, that's why. <laughs> now this one is right at the threshold at 50 bucks for a 2.5 ounce bottle. 
this is a brand that's getting a little more love in the community. I like to see that. If you're looking for a leather-based set with a higher quality build, I would recommend this one. Um, I was not expecting this to make the list, but when I saw that price, I had to put it in the list. This is from a line that's not well known if you're new to fragrances, but you won't know what Malinar is, but they do have a rich history if you take a look at what this brand is all about. And this is one of their better scents. I own their Fig one and their Queer. I highly recommend this one. If you're looking into the leather game and you're just starting out and you want to smell something that has a rough and tumble leather, um, this has it and it has other things uh, surrounding it. Beautiful from the house of Malinar. This is number 39 at number 38. Let's go classics. <laughs> when you're talking about classics and you're talking about the house of Guedelang, and they got several fragrances under 50 bucks because I love, I love their men's line because at discounters, most of them are really cheap. And this is Guedelang Vetiver. Now my bottle's a little different than what they will have on online. This is an older bottle presentation. They have a newer bottle presentations, but don't be scared. Uh, <laughs> this one right here, classic. Now this is for your older gentleman or someone that's looking to get into the vetiver game. This is a, a great, great scent, um, a solid scent. And definitely if you start getting into notes, you know, you want to see what a note smells like, um, get a lane. Vetiver is a good one to start. And this is the first of many Gedelains in this list. And I mean many. Um, oh, oh, this is beautiful. Um, man, oh, this is a classic Vetiver and a great start to sniffing Vetiver. This was released back in 1961. Yeah, I'm going back in time here. But it's a classic. It's very wearable to this day. This is a recommendation maybe to my older heads, but maybe somebody that's deeper into this fragrance journey, I wouldn't recommend this as your first fragrance bottle in your collection. But if somebody's getting deeper in this stuff that you're kind of getting away from the Amarni Code Profumos and you're looking to be a little more mature, like wearing stuff like this and Malinar, this is the type of crowd that this would go into. Um, man, this is a really good one. I highly recommend it. A 3.4 inch bottle that doesn't look like this, but it's this amount of juice. You're looking at $36 you're getting yourself a piece of fragrance history, honestly, at number 38. At number 37, did I say fragrance history? Yes, I did. Zeno by David Off. Man, before Cool Water, it was this one. And I just talked about this one on my channel. I'm gonna put this little teeny little bottle right in the front here. Um, Zeno, coming in at 20 bucks for a 4.2 ounce. <laughs> it's probably the cheapest fragrance on this list, price, price wise, but oh, Oh, does it pack a punch? <laughs> Love the patchouli in here. If you're looking for a mature masculine scent, the buck stops here. If you like vetiver, if you're looking for classic mature scents, vetiver, um, this won't go out of style. Zeno, grab them both. This one is discontinued, but still plenty of stock online for a great price. Maybe it's time to snatch Zeno up while you're watching this video. Maybe. For 20 bucks, probably the cheapest fragrance but definitely not in the bottle. Uh, the juice inside is absolutely gorgeous. Now going at number 36 from the House of Guedelay, another one. They're well represented here. This is from their um line. This is Guedelay um. And uh, the bottle doesn't look like this. They don't have the plaque anymore, uh, but uh, Mojito in a bottle. Um, this has made a lot of my top 10 lists uh, over the years and a really great scent for spring and summer. Um, yeah, Mojito in a bottle, a beautiful, coming in at $42 for a 3.3 ounce, you're gonna get a great scent for spring and summer. Um, you're going to be a little different from all the other people out there. It's great for office wear, so you can wear it yearly in the office. You're a little different than the lemon wears, and you're getting a solid build. The fragrance has a build really well here. The packaging has changed, so word of the wise, since I got mine, but it's the same juice inside. Beautiful, Guerlain, um at number 36. At number 35, let's take a look at what we got a little more recent release here. This is a Valentino Womo, and this is the Intense version. So this one right here, it did receive some hype. The Womo line from Valentino is actually pretty good. Um, it has received some hype from the community. It's a more modern grab. It kind of reminds me of like Ziaram Intense, Ziaram. Um, so now that Zial is playing around with their Ziaram lineup and trying to get rid of Iris, boom, Valentino Womo lineup is probably your best bet to get that. Um, really, this is coming in at the threshold for $50 for a 1.7 ounce. 
It's not much of a deal to be quite honest, but I think it's very much worthy to be on this list, especially at this uh, number, at number 35. A solid release. Very much, um, if you don't like Iris, um, you know, if you don't like unisex based fragrances, um, I'm talking to the men out there, you're looking for something a little more, you know, something like this. Um, this might be up your alley, but it might not. So just be careful with that. Uh, but Valentino Womo Intense, a really good one at number 35. At number 34, we'll go with the House of Bulgari. They got a few uh, releases in this top 50. This is Bulgari Man Black Orient. And I remember when they released this. I'm not a big fan of the Bulgari Man Black line. This one I am. Um, but this is a solid release. Um, now, these are not 9 out of 10s or 10 out of 10 fragrances. In my personal opinion, when you see me reviewing this Bulgari Man lineup, you're going to see a little bit of some duds. But this one is one of the better ones. And for a two ounce bottle, you, for $37 on Fragrance X, this was probably the scent that I resonate the most from this lineup. Well done, uh, dark, mysterious, uh, very well, well done for a night out at number 34. At number 33, we're going with the House of Mubilier. Not too many from that house made the list because a lot of them were out of stock. Um, I was looking at pure malts, I was looking at pure coffee, um, all of those, and uh, pure Havan. Uh, some of them are, of course, higher than $50. Uh, you can go on TJ Maxx and they have those, especially my American friends. So those would have made, like, Pure Malt would have probably be, be in my top 10 on this list. But Pure Malt was not in stock at the time. This one, their newer release, Alien Man. Now, this one is getting panned. Oh, is it getting panned online? Uh, fragrance reviewers are just having a field day with this one. Now, this is new, uh, new to me. Uh, utilizes dill. Um, now, obviously, a newer release like this that is under $50 at a discounter this early means that it did not sell well. That's me being honest. Uh, from a brand like this, if it sells well, it'll probably stay around $70 to $80 for a bit, um, and then it'll dip down a little bit more. But um, you're getting this at $50 on the mark for a 3.4 ounce, the same bottle that I have and you're going to be grabbing from uh, a brand like UVA uh, one of their latest releases. Um, personally, I just got mine. I haven't worn this too much, but I feel like it's a solid release from the house. Um, again, it's getting a lot of, of heat from the fragrance community, so keep that in mind. But, you know, if you're trying to check out this brand, this might be a good one to try out. Now, number 32, another Gatelaine. I think I have like at least 10 bottles from this brand on here and the proof's in the pudding. Uh, there's quality here from the brand. It is one of the uh, brands with the most history um, in our fragrance uh, realm. And you know, a brand like Chanel, which has good history too, they hold their value. These not so much as far as uh, discounters go. So this is from their Ideal lineup and this is Ideal Cologne in the white bottle. Oh, this one again, newer to me. I just got this in a haul, uh, I would say several months ago, and I'm trying it out. And it'll probably make a spring or summer list uh, in the near future on my on my channel. But it is um, getting a lot of press in the past few months. Um, now that it's winter, it kind of calmed down. But I remember at the tail end of summer, people were hyping this thing up. Grab a bottle. Um, the prices all over the place online. So here at Fragrance X, they got a 1.6 ounce for $22. What? <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. So if you're looking for, you know, early spring list right now, boom, that one, get it. Um, it's an excellent freshie. Um, this one uh, may not be available if I make this list next year. At number 31 from YSL. They have a few on this one, but uh, this one right here, we're going the classic realm, 80s baby, Kuros, King Kuros. I can't make a list without it. And yes, I am spraying it. <laughs> this is for the experience frag hit. Like I can't, <laughs> I cannot emphasize that more. Experienced frag hit. <laughs> um, if you're 19 and you're like, ooh, that white bottle, I like that one. I'm gonna blind buy that one. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. King Kuros has to make the list for my old heads. I salute you guys. I love you guys. Anybody that likes King Kuros, you know, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
This is not for the faint of heart. I'm very interesting. You have to have a particular nose to enjoy this. Um, I would have to say for mature nose, yes, coming in at 1.6 ounce for $43. I feel like that's an excellent price for the king. Gabe Kuros. I'm gonna leave you right there. Wow, wow. That's a fragrance that uh, is very much polarizing. Now we're getting close to the halfway mark. Let's take a look at number 30. Number 30 is from the house of John Varvatos. And remember when I said way back in the front of this video, I said, don't pay full retail. This is one of the brands. This is John Varvatos Vintage. Now this is my favorite from the Varvatos lineup. I like their scents. They don't last long, but I like their scents. Their composition is very dark, um, very well composed. Um, oh. You're gonna kick yourself if you pay over $50 for a Varvato scent, so don't do it. Um, but you're gonna see them under 40 bucks within a few months of release, so be patient. Um, I practice patience with my fragrances because hell, I don't need any more. <laughs> but uh, coming in for $30 for 2.5 ounce of vintage here is a perfect entry level darker scent for someone looking for something that has complexity in the designer game and um, this is great for you great for fall winter highly recommended for me is vintage that's where i fell in love with the house of varvados is that one right there at number 29 now you're gonna see a lot of fragrances that were top sellers back in the 90s it's still really good sellers for the brands um, but you're gonna see some of the greats from the 90s here and that's what happens um, things go kind of out of style. It's kind of like clothes, right? Clothes goes out of style, but at the same time you have some classics and you can grab some great, great scents for under $50 that were great, great scents, still are. This one right here from the House of Versace, Dreamer. You know what? They should make a flanker of this, like a darker, like a black bottle with a gold Medusa head. I got ideas, I got ideas. So <laughs> Dreamer, um, the Dreamer, not many, oh, not many Versace's make this list. I'm not a big fan of the Versace brand, um, but this one is a top seller from that era, uh, from the 90s, that I still think is a solid fragrance. It's definitely something that you're starting your journey with that you can get for really cheap. You can get a bottle of this, $31 for this bottle right here. Well, that's a great purchase, honestly, from the house of Versace and still very, very good fragrance. Again, a polarizing scent, this one. Um, you have to be careful, some hate, some love. So I do have a review on my channel on that one. So definitely go check out the Versace Dreamer review on my channel. At number 28, talking about car companies, the only Bentley that made it in this list, number 28, this is Bentley uh, for men intense. There's an absolute two that I absolutely love, pun intended. Uh, but this one right here, oh yeah, very well composed. Um, not too many car companies can make the list, but Bentley and Ferrari did it. And this one right here, 33 bucks for the 3.4 ounce bottle right here is a bargain. And the quality that you're getting, um, beautiful. I remember this one was kind of hyped also, uh, just like the Ferraris and people were purchasing this for full retail, like paying a premium, 80, 90, almost a hundred dollars splitting, getting the bottle. Now you can get a solid darker scent here for under 50 bucks, under 40 bucks, really. Uh, beautiful woody scent. Um, I really, really recommend that one if you're looking for something a little darker. Uh, for a man in his 30s, maybe um, a really good set at number 28. Number 27, again, another classic from the 90s, Burberry Brit for men. Now, don't get the women's uh, one. Um, they all look the same. So Burberry Brit. Um, there's, again, that's another brand, Burberry. I'm not a big fan of their newer releases. Um, I don't, I'm trying to remember the last thing that I liked from them uh, in the 2000s. And I think I'm coming up blank. <laughs> Burberry Brit. Um, this one right here, uh, this one's worthy uh, for for 3.4 ounce bottle. Um, you can get it for $38 on Fragrance X, which isn't too bad. And I think this is the second best release in the men's aisle from the brand. Just be careful when you're buying this, the woman's counterpart, also the bottle looks kind of the same. So just keep that in mind when you're buying online. But this one, a great scent, I think, Best for fall, Burberry Brit, and I'll have a review on this, of course, too. Let's stay stuck in the 90s from the house of Dolce Cabana. This is Dolce Cabana Puram, another classic. You can get a 4.2 ounce of this bottle for $48. You just squeak right under the $50 mark. Um, but what a classic, cl classic set. Now, Dolce Cabana are kind of in a funk right now with their scents. They're having a hard time getting their foothold in the men's game. 
Um, I feel like a lot of their sets are below par. They do good with the one series, but that's about it. Why not go with a classic here? That's easy to wear, very versatile, easy to wear. Staple for me, back in the 90s, I actually wore some of this back in the 90s. Very good scent, uh, coming in at number 26. At number 25, we got a, actually, uh, there are two fragrances that's gonna share the spotlight here. It is from the House of Paco Rabanne. The only one in this list is One Million Privé and the original One Million. I'm gonna spray them both just because I'm that kind of guy. So One Million, I think we all know about this. Oh yeah, classic, classic fragrance. Um, lasts for ages. Um, you can get a 1.7 ounce of this or the Privé uh, for $44 on Fragrance X. Um, for younger head, this is perfect for you. You're just starting out. You want something a little sweet this is for you um the original we all know it's classic um it's it's done its job <laughs> for the bubble gummy uh, crowd but this one privé um a little more modern both very much playful sweet sets um, that do the job so privé or one million at number 25. now number 24 we've passed our halfway mark here you still with me <laughs> this is womo from ferragamo ferragamo they're back in the game with this release here, um, again, very much a uh, sweet fragrance, but for a 3.4 ounce bottle for $35, I feel that's a steal for what you're getting. Um, that's pretty much bargain bin pricing, and this should still be selling at around $50 to $60. So you're getting a, a solid modern scent here. Very well composed from the House of Ferragamo at number 24. Number 23, House of Gatelain. Yes, another one from them, and this is L'Instant de Gatelain. Pour on. So this is the eau de toilette. Um, this is not the extreme version. The extreme version is actually, was not in stock when I shot this video. I actually like the extreme version better, but I can still go with the EDT. I can still play around with that one. Um, recently added to my collection. I feel this is a solid choice for $38 for a 3.4 ounce. It's more of a grown up taste to be quite honest. And honestly, I feel like you have to be deeper in your journey to really appreciate this scent. Um, but as always, pricing on some of these Gatelains are definitely crazy for me. Like you can build a Ibiru Vetiver uh, Lidge. Um, you can build a really solid rotation from the House of Gatelain for under 50 bucks, all of them. Um, really a good scent here at number 23. A little darker, but it has a little bit of citruses up top to make it a little thinner than the extreme version. Really good scent. Now the House of Bulgari, they got a double-headed monster here at number 22. Talking about aquatics, there's not too many aquatics on this list, right? I'm not a fan of them. This one right here, a Bulgari Aqua put on the original. Now everybody's talking about Amara and how good that scent is. Nah, nah, this is the best. This is the best water drop in the game right here. This one right here, $27 for a one ounce bottle. So you're not getting much fragrance, but given um, you're getting one of the most unique aquatics in the game, in the men's game. It's truly a remarkable green, blue, dark sea, uh, ocean base set. I love it. It's, it's very unique and I absolutely love it. At number 21, let's take a look at Bulgari again, the hockey puck of the fragrance game. This is right up my alley as a Canadian. Bulgari black. Yes. Very unisex fragrance. Men, women, if you're watching, it's a good one. I'm um, very much um, utilizing the signature tea from the House of Bulgari. They love utilizing tea in their fragrances, but this one has tons of vanilla. It's got like a rubber note, hence the bottle. Um, oh man, um, 2.5 ounce bottle, you can get it for $38. And from my standpoint, you're getting one of the better Bulgari scents in the game. Great tea, rubber note, vanilla, solid, easy to wear. Oh man, it's a great scent. Um, yeah, 38 bucks, you're good at 21. Number 20, talking about vanilla and talking about classic, Givenchy's Pie. Again, another very much unisex fragrance, vanilla-based scent. Um, for 1.7 ounce of this stuff, you'll get it for $39. You'll be getting one of Givenchy's top sellers since the 90s. Highly unisex, by the way. I've seen a lot of women wearing this fragrance. The staple in the fragrance game. One of the better vanillas in the game. Straight up a solid release from the House of Givenchy. I like this one pie, uh, of course, coming in at number 20. Now let's get into the teens. 19, we're going to start off with uh, Dolce Cabana's The One EDP. Oh, put a big, pretty big dent in this one. 
Um, there's this one and then there's the Eau de Toilette version, the original, uh, which is a better seller than this one. Um, this one much, um, I'm not gonna say much darker, but it's darker. Um, yeah, I actually prefer this one over the Eau de Toilette. And spoiler alert, the Eau de Toilette is in this list. Um, it's a better seller. It's easier to wear that one than this one. Um, but the EDP here for a 1.6 ounce, you'll get it for $37 on Fragrance X. And I would say that's a great deal for someone that's actually a little deeper in this hobby like I am. And they're looking for darker scents in the designer realm that not everyone is wearing. And that's one of those things that I love being unique in the fragrance game for me. And this would be a great starter for a great price. Um, so this is one of those that you'll smell a little different than, you know, guys wearing this stuff and wearing this stuff like the sweeter scents you know the one millions um this is a little darker a little more mature well composed um the one uh, lineup is known for longevity and projection problems so if you're just like beast mode all day every day this is probably a better bet than the last one but the composition very well done at number 18 a newer release from the house of prada i love prada they make um squeaky clean fragrances things that you don't have to think about um if you hate fragrances it's probably the brand to go with um they're very i wouldn't say uh, boring or blah but they just work and you smell clean and they're well composed they're great for work um this one right here at number 18 yeah if you're not a fan of fragrances but looking for a fragrance this is probably where you go this is as simple as it gets you get a 1.7 ounce for 43 dollars on fragrance x I would say that's an easy gift purchase for someone. I don't see many people not liking this scent. Um, I pretty much call this the office scent because it's not uh, offensive, easy to wear. It's one of those, close your eyes and wear it. And uh, the bottle itself is absolutely gorgeous. Love it. At number 17, let's talk about Cartier and their Declaration series. I got two of them actually. So I put two and one here. You got the original Declaration, which the, this is a limited edition bottle, so if your bottle doesn't look like mine, don't worry about it. And this is Declaration d'un Soir. Both great, Jean Claude Elena, by the way, and a great rose-based fragrance. So let me get my blotters here um, because I want to smell these because I love them. So Declaration, these are big bottles, by the way. How much are these, by the way, on fragrance X? So um, $44 for 3.3 ounce of either one of these um, steel. First of all, this one right here, a classic from Jean-Claude Elena. Oh yeah, you can't go wrong. Um, that one right there, Declaration, beautiful. In this one, I wanna smell that rose again because it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, this one has, oh, it's underrated, man. Um, so many fragrance reviewers should check out Declaration their Swat if they haven't. Um, one of the best rose-based scents on the market for men. Um, yeah, probably the two best releases from the brand. Uh, very close in the men's aisle right here. Oh man, Declaration and Rose. Both of them uh, solid purchases for under $50. At number 17, at number 16, a classic from the 90s, is Miyaki Pur Um, Obviously this one right here. Everybody knows it. If you don't, where have you been? Um, it is a classic. I love the uh, Isimiyaki DNA. This one right here is a classic. Um, you can get a big, and I mean big bottle, 6.8 ounce for $49. If you wanted a clean scent and something original, Isimiyaki utilizes a yuzu that not a lot of brands do. Um, it's the, their signature. Um, and this one is where it started at all. The Freshies, um, absolutely gorgeous uh, fragrance. It's easy to wear, uh, easy to put on for office, inoffensive, and a great purchase from the House of Issey Miyake at number 16. At number 15, talking about fresh, let's talk about Neroli here. This is the last from the car companies. This is Ferrari Bright Neroli. Same thing with the Noble Fig. This fragrance, people from the community were going nuts about it. Nuts. Um, they wanted to pay full retail for this stuff. Um, so at number 15, it's beating out a lot of name brands, the YSLs, the Versaces, and, and Gucci's and stuff like that. But man, um, for Neroli scent, and this is what's great about the Noble Fig and Neroli, you will know what Neroli smells like when you smell this fragrance. Um, price point, 25 bucks for a 3.4 ounce. So you're getting this bottle right here for 25 bucks, unbeatable. And it would be hard pressed to find a Neroli that's as close as this for that price. 
At the height of its hype on YouTube, people were going for $70 to $100 per bottle. Easy. Get at this price while you can. Beautiful, beautiful scent. Now, Neroli, again, is a note that some people love and hate. So you gotta know if you really do like Neroli. Um, I feel like this would probably be somebody that's, you know, mid-tier, you know, they, they've smelled some fragrances and they want to start getting delving more into the, the fragrances, starting to get to new notes and stuff like that, or starting to get into niche. This would be a great entry level for someone like that. Looking at number 14 uh, from Dolce Cabana, this is the one, the Eau de Toilette. So the EDP made its presence, now the Eau de Toilette makes its presence. It's a top seller from Dolce Cabana. Um, a really solid scent. A lot of people love this scent as just longevity and projection is an issue for a lot of people. It's easier to wear than the EDP. A little more expensive at $49, but a solid purchase from the house of Dolce Cabana. I really like this one, great for fall, um, rainy spring days, things like that. Uh, the one EDT, a solid release from the house. Now going with Lalique, uh, you're gonna see a couple Laliques in this top 13 because it's number 13 this is Ancre Noire L'Extreme highly recommended for me uh 34 bucks for a 3.3 ounce so you're getting the exact bottle that I have do I have room up front no I do not this is a big bulky bottle uh oh running out of room now Ancre Noire L'Extreme L'Extreme um bargain this Ancre Noire series if you like Vetiver buy them all the sport this one the original they're great um, and they're under 50 bucks. This is this one is not, uh, as per the name, it's not the extreme version of the original, um, but it's solid in its own right. A great darker scent and beautiful from the House of La I uh, can't believe the pricing on these Ancre Noirs are absolutely gorgeous. At number 13, at number 12 from Gatelet again. This is from their Aqua Algoria line. This is Herba Fresca. I love this one. And Gatelet is dominating this list. Um, I think it is the brand that has the most bottles in this list for good reason. Herba Fresca, all beautiful. Um, this one is uh, one of the best mint-based scents in the game right now. I love it. It has made a top 10 list on my on my list, almost like clockwork. Um, for 4.2 ounce, you can get it for $34. I would gladly pay double, maybe, um, I might be pressing the issue, triple of what this is getting, you're getting from this. Uh, fresh scent, the quality, you can smell it. Very simplistic though, um, but a good one. Highly recommended, highly unisex. Men, women can wear it, and you won't regret purchasing this one if you do like mint or green scents. Now at number 11, and we're gonna do top 10 soon. This is from the House of Burberry and their last uh, entry here, Burberry London for Men. Uh, port wine, um, beautiful uh, festive scent. I, I don't like pigeonholing it, but really, uh, uh, it's listed under Burberry London New on Fragrance X. I don't know why, uh, but uh, you get a 3.4 ounce for $36. So you get this for $36 to steal. It is their best men's release, in my personal opinion, from Burberry. Um, this is one great for Thanksgiving, um, Christmas, um, and I don't want to pigeonhole it for that. It's actually great for all of fall and great spices and it has just a festive uh, feel to the fragrance so we finally made it to the top 10 and i know a lot of you out there and i'm watching you the ones that fast forwarded and didn't even look at these are missing out okay just because it's in my top 10 personal taste um, it's in my collection personal taste pricing and my collection these are fragrances and a lot of them i've had a journey with and fragrances is very personal so just because King Kuros is way back in the list, it could be someone's personal favorite and it could be yours. So if you're skipping to the top 10 and just buying the top 10 from yours truly because I have 37,000 subscribers, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I'm just doing this to, to help out and number 50 is just as good as number one. So now that I got that out of the way because a lot of you fast forwarded, let's take a look at number 10. We'll start it out with the squeaky clean house of Prada. Now before um was a thing, this was a thing, Amber put on. This one right here, um, Prada's first men's release, quote unquote. Oh yeah, um, for 1.7 ounce, uh, you're gonna get this for right under $40. This is one of the better Prada offerings. Uh, back in the day, this was my very first full bottle of Prada. I actually blind bought this fragrance. And uh, when they first initially launched their fragrance line, 
I reviewed it back in 2009 when I first started my channel. Um, I was so impressed how clean and inoffensive this thing is and I told, basically, I on my channel I said Prada is the king of clean. And uh, they just got into the fragrance game. Still love it to this day. I highly recommend it. And this thing pushes for a clean scent. Um, longevity and projection, pretty good on Prada and Amber Put. I'm at number 10, at number 9. Yeah, yeah, the mark. <laughs> also known as Le Mal from Jean Paul Gaultier. Uh, 90s, of course, top seller. Club scent, it's more than a club scent, folks. Man, it's still good. Uh, my staple, this is where my journey started in the designer game. Well, it didn't start, but my love for fragrances started. Um, still solid to this day. I, I, I really don't care uh, what bottle size they're gonna give me on Fragrance X. Um, I was gonna put this on the list. If it was under 50 bucks, I'm gonna do it. And they have a 1.4 ounce for uh, how much? 35 bucks and highly worth it. <laughs> I still think Le Mal can be a signature scent for somebody and is not just a clubbing scent. Mm, can be a signature scent. Great lavender vanilla combo there. Beautiful, beautiful scent. And number nine, and number eight, talking about signature scents way back in, in the day, this was Boss Bottled, also known as Boss Number Six. Um, another staple for me, when I was wearing Le Mal, I was wearing Boss Bottled actually. So they're both wholly crowded. They put it in the front, yes, Boss Bottled. Um, there's, there's something to be said from a fragrance that I've had back in the 90s and I'm still wearing to this day. There's a lot of fragrances that I've worn in the 90s that I kind of, like a Dolce Gabbana put on. I'm not wearing it as much as I used to. Le Mal and Boss Bottled, obviously a signature scent. I've worn them a lot back in the 90s, but now I still reach it for them. Now that could be just because of, of you know, I've had a pass with them, but yeah. This is, uh, man, this is, a, a great um, apple pie vibe, um, man. This is probably the best Hugo Boss scent um, is Boss Bottled, in my opinion. Um, I have a hard time finding really good Hugo Boss scents, and this one uh, has done it for me. It's been number one back in the 90s, and it's still number one to me. Um, obviously, they've done flankers of Boss Bottled, which are very, very good. But um, beside all the crappy Hugo Boss scents, and I'm just being honest, the Hugo Boss is not a brand I look out for, but once they release a flanker to Boss Bottled, uh, my ears perk up a little bit and they go, yes, yes. Uh, it's simply outstanding for $36 on Fragrance X for a 3.3 ounce. I'm sold. One of the best signature scents I've ever bought. And I would still buy it at, at that price, 100%. Ah, number eight on my list. I'm number seven uh, from the house of Guerlain. <laughs> you sick of me uh, saying Guerlain? This one, really good. I got an old school bottle of Pamplelune. Pamplelune. Oof. A... Uh, Mm, grapefruit base set. Now, if you like grapefruits in your scents, and there's a lot of scents with just the grapefruit opening, that opening, I guarantee you, cannot even come close to holding a candle to Gatelaine's Pomp Le Lune. This is the best grapefruit base scent in the game. She's tart, she's fruity, she's simply outstanding. Um, if you don't own this and you love grapefruit, lock yourself up in a room, you have to. At $35 for a 4.2 ounce bottle, get a bottle and get a backup bottle. You're owning one of the best in that genre. I believe is the best grapefruit on the market. And that includes niche, indie, I don't care. It's very simplistic, but authentic and it's a winner in my books. Pamplin, awesome. At number seven. At number six, another signature set of mine. Uh, this is from Yves Saint Laurent. This is Lum. I was actually surprised uh, Lum I could find a bottle of them. My cap doesn't want to come off. No, I want to smell it. Coming off. Oof. Been a while since I've worn this scent, apparently. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm running out of space on my table here, but this was a good idea, but uh, not anymore. So, Lung. Yeah, this is again, like Boss Bottled in this kind of reminds me of each other just because they're signature scent worthy. I can wear them at work. They have some depth to them. I can wear them very versatile almost all seasons. Um, you can get a two ounce bottle, which again is not much, but it's better than a one ounce for $46 on Fragrance X and you're not gonna regret it. Very much a signature. This would be great for a starter fragrance for somebody. Um, if you get this as your first bottle in your collection, um, I won't hate you. <laughs> you you started on a solid footing a, a great scent and again this one right here uh, some people hate it some people love it i love the ginger in this uh, lum is uh, uh, a staple for me from yves saint Laurent. 
Now onto my top five. And my top five, I'll be quite honest with all of you out there. Um, you may need a more experienced nose for a lot of these fragrances just because they're very much polarizing. They're right up my taste. And um, that's why they're top five to me. I think a lot of these are very much artistic too. Um, and you know, I, I like fragrances that are a little more pedestrian, you know, something that you, every fragrance is a very much artistic, but something like this, um, there's art in it, but at the same time, very much pedestrian that uh, people just want to wear to smell good. These fragrances right here, more polarizing, um, a little more um, going, pushing the envelope a little bit in the designer game. And I love that. Um, that's what I look out for in, in my journey now is designer fragrances that will push the envelope a little bit. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of these and that's why I'm giving you guys this because I don't want anybody that's really new uh, to the journey and goes, well, Mark says that Gucci Guilty Absolute, which is in this list, is one of his best. I'm gonna blind buy it and you're gonna hate it. I'll be honest with you. Um, so let's go. Let's start it. Gucci Guilty Absolute starts the list at number five. Now, <laughs> polarizing, challenging, yes, but whew, for under 50 bucks, this is the best Gucci. I'm honest. Oh man, this is good stuff. And I put a dent in it. Now this is a newer release and it's crazy. Newer releases, either they don't sell well, where's Alien right here. This one probably didn't sell well and that's why it's in this list. Oh, but in the name, Absolute. This is an absolute steal for somebody that's in their journey like I am. If your nose is seasoned like mine, you want challenging scents, you want artistic scents, this is one of the better bangs for your buck in the designer game. They come far and few between. And this one right here is a must buy in my opinion. You can get a 1.6 ounce for 48 bucks and I feel this is such a steal, but Oh, she's polarizing, I love it. Um, I'm, I'm getting kind of like a nosegasm. I don't know if I just said nosegasm. Yes, I did. Oh boy, uh, the comments below. But um, oh, such a beautiful, I do have a fragrance review on this one, um, but oh, I actually want to get an, another bottle of this stuff because I'm going through it really quickly. Gucci Guilty Absolutes of Steel at number five. At number four, something a little more seasoned for me. I've had this bottle for a long, long time. And this is from Narciso de Rodriguez, their only bottle in this list. This is Narciso Rodriguez for him, the Eau de Toilette. Now there is an, um, there's different versions of this stuff, so just be careful. I am recommending the Eau de Toilette, the EDT. Oh, <laughs> wet concrete, um, beautiful. Um, the bottle presentation, the gray, this is what this smells like, very artistic. Now musky, the muskiness is simply outstanding. Um, man, this is one of the best designers in the game. For 1.7 ounce, you'll get it for $39 on Fragrance X and you win all day. Uh, the bottle looks simply outstanding. The gray bottle reminds me of the scent, a wet concrete uh, type scent. Beautiful for rainy day, like a gloomy day. You're, you're sad today, kind of a little sad. I see so that Adigas will not pick you up. It'll put you back in the glummy uh, state that you're in, but it goes well with that thought process. Um, overcast days, rainy days, I love wearing this one. And if you're into artistic scents like I am, 100% uh, Nasi Soda de Digas at number four. Um, this could be number one all day, every day. At number three from the House of Lalique, another Ancre Noir. This is the original Ancre Noir. Oh, good old Ancre Noir here. Where's the atomizer? Remind me of that beautiful dark vetiver. Where's the extreme? There it is. I'm gonna put Ancre Noir right on top of extreme. Now Ancre Noir, man, um, I couldn't make this. This was like one of the first bottles I thought of when I said I make it a top 50, under 50. I knew this was under 50. I knew it was under 30. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, this is the first bottle I actually thought about when I compiled this list, honestly. And Ancre Noir is a staple vetiver for me. Um, if you want to know what vetiver smells like, um, it's artistic, it's green, it's dark. And for a 3.4 ounce bottle like mine, you're getting it for $27. 27 bucks for Ancre Noir. Are you kidding me? Run those numbers back. Fragrance X. <laughs> it's, a, it's everywhere for that price. But uh, a big bottle for 130 bucks. 
Sold. And get me a backup bottle while you're at it. Aquanoa is a classic in the game. It is a game changer for your nose. And again, um, if you're, uh, let's say you're not just starting out, but you're you're mid-tier, you know, you you own a good dozen fragrances and you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, Aquanoa is right up my alley for a darker scent. Beautiful dark uh, vetiver. Not a clean vetiver uh, like Galilee vetiver, but a darker uh, vetiver. Well, well, well done. At number two, from Muglier. This is another fragrance that I, I thought that would be more than $50, but they have it for under $50 and it was a no brainer. This is the original Angel Man Amen. What can I say? Um, this has just as much history with me than Le Mal. Um, I have the, of course, the refillable flask here, the beautiful metal flask that I absolutely love. And, um, Oh yeah, this scent's just a beast. Uh, patchouli, gourmand, um, bam. For $47, you get the big bottle, the 3.4 ounce. You are getting a top seller from the brand. You are getting history. You are getting a fragrance that is different from everybody else. Now, when you're new to your journey, you're gonna smell this and you'll be like, Mark is on drugs liking this fragrance. Yeah, come back to me a year later, six months later, three years later in your journey, and you tell me this is not one of the most polarizing uh, fragrances that was released in the 90s, still great to this day. This fragrance is one of those that challenged my palate and uh, made me the fraghead that I am. I mean, it really is something that is um, artistic, at the same time uh, challenging, and I never get sick of it. Like when fall hits, I, I miss this fragrance during the summer. I, miss, I can wear it during the summer, but during the fall, it's just magic. Um, beautiful, beautiful scent. At number two, number one, number one, it's right there. <laughs> it is from the house of Hermes, and you're like, Hermes for under $50? Are you kidding, Mark? It, it, it's like Chanel and Dior. It's unheard of. Tal d'Hermes, their top seller, Eau de Toilette. Now, um, I prefer uh, different tell them like this one is still a classic to my eyes but uh, I like the one with the white cap the old fresh version um, there's there's diff different versions of this stuff and you'll see tell Hermes anything Hermes is very expensive uh, even on discounters I'm gonna put it right here because you're a beast um, it's number one for a reason because it's unheard of and it's one of their top sellers so you're getting one of their better fragrances and if you're starting to get into or you want to get into Dior, Chanel, and Hermes, and you feel like they're too expensive for you, and you never really bought one, um, and you're really intermediate as far as your nose, you're starting to get into it, um, this is one to get. Now, you're only getting a one ounce bottle, so it's a good test for you for 40 bucks, but you're getting an Hermes. And man, Tad is a dirty orange of the fragrance game. Um, it's a purchase that says your nose kind of grew up a little bit. It's very um, mature, it's a serious scent. And this, if you like this, you may step into more Chanel's, more Dior's, and maybe more into the niche brands now. Uh, Tad is one of the best sellers from Hermes for good reason. It is my favorite, one of my favorite, from one of my favorite noses, Jean-Claude Delena. And, oh, yeah, a uh, beautiful composition. And I know, like, I'm gonna get some people who are gonna say ISO E Super, blah, blah, blah. You know what? People throw around, oh, it's a nice e ISO E Super scent, and it's really not creative at all. That's what I think of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't care what molecule they utilize in fragrances. Um, if it's well composed, like Elena does with it, um, I feel like it's, it's a great scent. And, Number one on the list for a reason. So there it is, guys. My top 50, uh, under 50. What a list. Uh, took me a while to compile, but um, I think it's well worth it for a lot of you out there. Please comment below. Let me know what you think about the list. I know you're going to let me know what I missed out of the list. <laughs> Those are definitely going to be coming in. But um, yeah, thank you so much for the support in 2019. I am starting 2020 with this video. So hopefully that's a good start of the year. And I want to thank the fragrance community so much for the support for another year. We're on season, I don't even know which season I'm in anymore. Season 20 on the Robes 08 channel. I've lost count. Um, but I'm looking forward to new content in 2020. 
Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Have a good one.